there are a few special angles whose sine and cosine students are traditionally expected to learn. Those are pi over 6, which is 30 degrees, pi over 3, which is 60 degrees, and pi over 4, which is 45 degrees. And the sines and the cosines are the sine of pi over 6 is 1 half the cosine of pi over 6 is sadly messier. The square root of 3 over 2. And then for pi over 3, the same numbers, but they're reversed. The sine is the square root of 3 over 2. The cosine is one half. And then pi over four, another kind of messy number, square root of two over two. And pi over four has the special property that its sine and its cosine are the same. From these, you could find the other trigonometric functions if you needed them. Let's do the tangent of pi over 6. I don't think I've mentioned this in a video yet. It's certainly in the book that the tangent is the sine over the cosine. So then we just go here, we find the sine. It's one half. We find the cosine. It's the square root of three over two. We multiply top and top and bottom by two. And if you're the kind of person who thinks it's important, you can get the square root in the top. I've never cared much about that myself. Square roots can be in the top, they can be in the bottom, whatever. Um, similarly, if we wanted the secant, of pi over 3, we would hopefully remember that the secant is 1 divided by the cosine, and a nice number this time, 1 divided by 1 half, is 2. So using the fact that the tangent is sine over cosine, secant is 1 over cosine, cosecant is 1 over sine, and cotangent is cosine over sine, you can evaluate any of the trig functions at these numbers. Traditionally, Students commit these to memory, and then if they need the other trig functions, they work them out like I do here. Um, 
I sadly do not have any brilliant memory aid to help you with this. I know they're kind of ugly numbers to commit to memory.